TYT Sports, J.R. Jackson, Denise Jones. The Markel Fultz saga continues. Mm. Are you tired of this yet? No, I mean, it's just so <laughs> unfortunate, you know? I mean, I'm not saying that like we can't talk about it, but I'm just saying, like, are you tired of, like, I'm confused almost. It's I so back confused. and forth. I now I'm sad. Oh, well, we're going to get into more of the sadness. Markel Fultz, of course, um, highly touted player uh, coming in from uh, playing now mm -hmm. for the Sixers. Mm -hmm. um, worried about the yips, the shoulders. The fingers, the elbows, the yeah. wrists, the knees. Who knows, right? Um, but it continues on. Let's, uh, let's check out what's the latest for him from uh, Keith Pompey, 76 76ers insider. The Marco Fultz uh, shoulder saga now careening into its 13th month. It's sad, and it could end the second year guard's career with the 76ers. Uh, also, the team seems to be tired of all this drama, and Fultz looks bad. Mm. With conflicting statements about his health, dominating media reports off the court, and his poor production getting full attention on the court. Sources have long said that his uh, shooting woes were mental, that he had the yips, as I mentioned, and that the shoulder surgery was not a factor. Of course, uh, Ricky and I talked about before that they, um, they want to say something sometimes to get you off of right. what really is wrong. You say, oh, yeah, it's not really a factor, but it is because they just want to make sure it gets done because you don't want that negative media attention. Continuing on, still the Sixers maintain that Fultz's poor shooting was the result of, at first, his shoulder woes and later a scapular muscle imbalance. Perhaps they were protecting Fultz from the scrutiny that they thought he would receive from having a mental block regarding his shot, which came out of nowhere, apparently. Mm -hmm. The Athletic reported that Fultz is also dealing with a right wrist injury in addition to the shoulder ailment. According to that report, sources also said that Fultz would prefer a fresh start with another team. Mm, this is where the drama begins as of late. Later, his agent uh, denied that report. But for now, however, Fultz is still around as if the team, uh, with the team as if nothing's changed except his playing time. The Sixers keep saying they'll do whatever is best for Fultz, but the situation has overshadowed the success the team has shown this season. Of course. I mean, is anybody thinking about it? Well, some are, especially with, uh, with uh, Jimmy Butler coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, some sources have said that despite the team's statements, Fultz is no longer in the Sixers' long-term plans. So whoever's saying this is... Kind of putting, blowing everything up. And they're no longer using his shoulder as an excuse for his performance woes. Uh, some sources said that Fultz is getting bad advice. They said that the anxiety uh, that resulted from the advice, not a shoulder injury, has affected his shooting. Some observers said that there's no hitch in his shot uh, when Fultz is in a good place mentally, but his shot is a mess during those stressful times. Um, and that the Sixers are tired of this saga and are considering trading him. And multiple sources said that they are... Uh, said that they are, and his trade value must have declined a great deal since the start of the season. Uh, and lastly, the team might be able to get a late first-round pick for Fultz from a desperate club willing to take that chance, or the Sixers could try for a player with an expiring contract that would enable them to avoid paying the nearly $10 million that Fultz is guaranteed for next season, and he hasn't done much of anything yet. Which one is it? Okay, again, we're going to give your credentials. You played ball. You've been in stressful situations. You were a point guard, am I right? Yeah, but... But you, you're, the focus is on you. It doesn't matter what level. I know this is pros, right? You didn't play WNBA, I know. But still at the same time, is, when it jumps from yips to shoulder, you've had injuries too. Mm -hmm. Yips to shoulder to mental to not feeling like you're wanted or not feeling like you have what everyone expected. Does any of this make sense? Which one would you land on? As far as... What's wrong with this guy? You know what, man? Honestly, I feel like it's one of those things where there's definitely something physically wrong, first and foremost, and that's, I, I feel, it trickles down from there. So there's something physically wrong with him. That's affecting his mental, and unfortunately, that's affecting his performance on the court. I feel like he, he's number, he wasn't number one for a reason. I don't feel like he deserves to be on any bus list. I, I feel like the injuries are definitely to blame for everything that's going on with him this season. I feel like it's one of those things where it's unfortunate that the organization is, is already looking to, to figure out what the next move right. is after him, but that's the name of the game. That's the business. Even if he wasn't injured, if his performance wasn't meeting up to par early on in the season or, or even now, then they, were, they would already look for options um, uh, to trade him, right, or to get uh -huh. rid of him. With all that being said, I feel like his team— uh, his his camp individually needs to really look into and maybe become more vocal as far as what the physical injuries actually are and what how it's affecting his mental because there's clearly something wrong. We heard about the motorcycle accident. We don't know too much about it. We just know surface level details. Um, I feel like it's one of those things where if, if it's not taken care of, um, 
it can be really detrimental to his career. And I feel like if it is, then maybe he can go to the G League, get his confidence up, because again, he was number one for a reason. This is tough. Again, so a guy that's, that's again, <laughs> who's drafted, mm -hmm. number one, mm -hmm. and then has to go to the G League, it's, it, immediate bust comments, are, probably the bust comments are already happening. The, he's course. already on countless bust lists, which is so unfortunate. It's, yeah. it's so unfortunate. And so, and then, so again, he, when you work out with, with the Kawhi Leonard situation last year with uh, San Antonio, mm -hmm. um, and then you work with certain doctors, you don't know necessarily what's wrong, and maybe the team wants to protect what their doctors have said. Right. I'm not saying all that is what's happening, but there's all these factors that come into play, and maybe that's the source of why they're thinking about going separate directions. Everyone always wants to keep under wraps what the doctor's reports are when it's yours versus the, versus the team's versus another conflicting uh, source. So I wonder where that lies. And we've seen him look fine without... In the middle of all this injury, shoulder surgery stuff, we've seen his jumper look good in practice. We've seen here, his right? jumper look good in college. Like, the guy was an absolute menace. Yeah. And the reason I feel he's getting treated unfairly is because we're forgetting how good he was in college. This isn't something, this isn't a performance that, that you know, he's been carrying on. This this terrible performance that came from a physical injury that I'm not even sure how, exa how exactly it yeah. happened um, is, is something that happened overnight. The guy went from being absolutely great to now having every question mark around him. And it's unfortunate, again, that he's not getting the physical treatment that he deserves. Whatever it is, um, and I guess I'll say this as my old man approach, a guy in 1987 playing for the Sixers uh, who had this kind of injury or had some kind of issue with his shot, didn't, see, didn't listen and read about it on Twitter, Instagram, mm -hmm. and Facebook, and then also in instant uh, internet publishings and all this stuff about sports, you have to wait for the newspaper to come out, right? Right. And I think it gets to these guys' brains quicker. Absolutely. It permeates how much people call them busts immediately. Yeah. And something mentally is off with him. It maybe does, there's such thing as the yips. I never understood what that was. Mm -hmm. I feel like when you're playing at a high level, you kind of snap into muscle memory, even mentally. Your mental, mus mental muscle memory, I figure, has to kick in. So I don't understand overthinking things once you're playing. Right. I don't know. I, and maybe there's confidence issues. Maybe there's uh, mental health issues. We talk about how that's become more prevalent now. At least people are willing to talk about it right. more now. Well, I mean, just look at it. it look at the Derrick Rose situation, mm -hmm. and it's really unfortunate. But it, and it's it is different. I'm not comparing the two. I know Derrick Rose's injuries. You know, we saw exactly what happened. Uh, but look how bad it affected his mental, right? And look right. how everyone was treating him around him. And and look how again, because of how. He was playing scared defense and, and trying. He was playing a game where he wasn't going to get injured, and that made him more prone to get injured. Um, and I feel like with uh, Markel, it's just different because you're right. Back in the day, it made it to the papers. And even then, your agent, your team could negotiate with the journalist who's probably going to break the story and buy you even more time before things even got more out of hand. Now, it's like in seconds, sometimes a year. You, you see, I mean, look at Kevin Durant when Kevin Durant didn't even know he was going to get fined $25,000. <laughs> yeah. You know everyone, know, everyone knows about your, your bank account. Everyone knows before than you. you. Do. And uh -huh. so, of course, it's going to affect his mental. But I think, I feel like with Markel, it's different because it's not only what the media is saying, it's actually, I'm, I'm telling you, it starts with whatever is physically wrong with him. The fact that it frustrates him that he doesn't even know how to fix that because there's players that can get through injuries. Mm -hmm. We've seen Kobe get through, play through countless injuries. Players can play through injuries if they know what's wrong with them. I'm, I genuinely believe he does not know what's wrong with him, and that's what's frustrating him, and that's what's affecting his mental, and then he's hearing everyone around. He doesn't have an answer for them. I'm pretty sure his camp maybe doesn't have an answer. And so, of course, it's, it's all just trickling down because of a mysterious physical injury that we don't know is, is all about. I'm rooting for him. I, I, I never like jumping on the, this guy's out the NBA type of talk. His, I don't think people are saying he's out the NBA. I, I, I feel like you're, you're saying he's not a bust. Yeah. He's a not a bust. I right. agree with you. He's yeah. not a bust. Give him a chance for us. You know, and it's tough. So I would hope he would, if this is contributing to it, not listen to all the noise as much and just try and focus on getting his stuff together. Um, tell us what you think. Happy, have fun and happy people. Mark Hill Fultz saga continues. Uh, will he end up somewhere else? I don't with know. With her Lakers or something? G League maybe for a little um, bit. The G League Lakers? I think that... Or, or, you know, Laker fans always want every player to be on their team. <laughs> true, true. I mean, whatever G League he ends up with. You know, Can I tell you about Laker best. fans? Wish him the best. But you let us know where you think he should end up <laughs> in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Um, yeah. TYT Sports. See you guys. <laughs> Do you guys want full TYT episodes? Yeah.
So download YouTube TV and get a seven day free week trial.